people who brought you the fantasy about the despicable video that caused the Benghazi massacre, who used the IRS as a weapon to go after their political enemies, the ones who chip away at our First, Second, and Fourth Amendment rights, only to turn around and trumpet their right to hide behind the Fifth Amendment. The latest to come out of the Obama administration? Just a little slap at Syria. Really, Mr. President, now you want the American people, after all they've been through, to take you at your word and blindly follow you into yet another Middle East conflict? Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. This week, the Obama administration seeks congressional approval to strike Syria. The narrative? We go in for just a couple of days, do a quick military slap, no intention of regime change, and then call it a day. We'll show them. But right now, Russian and American destroyers and an untold number of submarines are lining up off the Syrian coast. Iranian fast boats are already in the Persian Gulf, where other American warships are positioned. And since we've given them fair warning, Mr. President, because of your latest indecision and dithering, our enemies in the Middle East have been moving assets and preparing to retaliate. It's teed up. Once we start the bombing, the Syrians will call on their allies, Iran and Russia. Now let me see if I understand this. We're looking to bomb Syria because of an alleged chemical attack risking a potential face-off with Iran and Russia in a move that will ultimately benefit who? Al-Qaeda? Mr. President, why for two years did the United States and the world stand silent as the civil war unfolded in Syria? Well over 100,000 casualties, women and children, Victims of bombings and shootings, missile attacks, executions, dismemberment, and decapitation. Now, 1,400 of the over 100,000 are believed to be victims of chemical weapons. Now, we need to engage in a dust-up with Syria? Mr. President, why is killing one way more heinous and worthy of our response than another? And why now? And what about Israel? We know you don't like Bibi, but hell, don't you have an obligation to not put our allies in harm's way? And your reason? I didn't set a red line. The world set a red line. Congress set a red line when it ratified that treaty. My credibility is not on the line. The international community's credibility is on the line. That's just not true. It's another one of your false narratives. A red line for us is we start seeing a whole bunch of chemical weapons moving around or being utilized. Uh, that would change my calculus. That would change my equation. A lie is a lie is a lie. You said it, the world heard it, and the world heard you say it. Syria heard you say it, and they gave you no mind, and they did it anyway. And by the way, if you didn't draw a red line, why are we going in? No one respects us. No one fears us. You've done this to us. Why draw red lines when everyone knows that your red lines are nothing more than green lights over and over again? But I got to give you one. You're right. Your credibility is not on the line. With all due respect, Mr. President, you have no credibility. To be credible, one must be clear and constant. Your actions must be swift and certain. You lost credibility when you left Americans on that rooftop in Benghazi, but fired up Air Force One to go to your Las Vegas fundraiser. That was a clear signal to the world that it's open season on Americans, even including an ambassador. And by the way, Whatever happened to, we're going to bring them to justice. It's been a year. Where's the justice? And now you want to hide behind Congress so you can blame them for your inaction. Or you say maybe you'll go in anyway. What's that all about? It's amateur hour in Washington. 
American lives weigh in the balance. We are a war-weary nation. Even you admit that. We are tired of spilling the blood of young American men and women in a part of the world that despises us. And to add insult to injury, you don't even take care of the vets when they come home. Many of them with fewer body parts and certainly more demons than when they left. And if you're so dead set against the killing of children that you are willing to send us into yet another conflict, will you guarantee that the thousand pound tomahawk missiles that you will heap on Syria won't kill children? Or are they simply your collateral damage? Will the murders of those children be less significant than those we go to avenge? Tell us. What is the American strategic interest? What is the end game? Did you think this one out? Or is politics so much a part of your calculus that it's all about you? A shot across the bow to hold Assad accountable? Degrade his capacity to carry out future attacks? Deter this behavior in the future? Do you really believe after this man killed over 100,000 people that he's afraid of you? And since you don't intend to take Assad out and expect him to weather this, you make the United States look even weaker. Little Syria survives an attack by the most militarily powerful country in the world. Well, at least we were until you showed up. And whose side are we on anyway? Take a look at this. These are the Syrian rebels whose side you want to take. They are killing young men, execution style. And if the use of chemical weapons is violating international standards, why isn't the international community standing shoulder to shoulder with you? The Brits, for the first time since 1782, have refused a request for military action by their prime minister. NATO has rejected your call. The European Union has rejected your call. The UN, of course, is still investigating. The, and the Italians? Well, they're too busy dancing with Berlusconi at one of his bunga bunga parties. And your good friend Putin had to give you a little lecture on international law. Only the UN Security Council could sanction the use of force against a sovereign state. Any other pretext or method which might be used to justify the use of force against a sovereign state is inadmissible and can only be interpreted as an aggression. You don't poke a stick in the eye of the tiger and expect the tiger to not react. The rebels you want to support are Al-Qaeda. You remember them? They took down the World Trade Center a few blocks from here. Ansar al-Sharia. You remember them? They massacred four Americans in Benghazi. And the Muslim Brotherhood. You remember them. You threw our friend Mubarak under the bus for them. And it's since worked out so well in Egypt. And by the way, no Americans were massacred in Syria like there were in Benghazi. So we should go to war for you to save face after making a dumb statement that you now say you didn't make? Have you thought this through? Your feckless foreign policy and paper tiger image have forced your hand. Even your friend Diane Feinstein agrees with me. Once the administration made this call, though, I think there is a real need for us to back it up. Or America becomes a paper tiger. Mr. President, in the past when America was respected and feared, no one would even dare think of crossing an American president's red line. Remember you said that you wouldn't go to war unless there was an imminent threat to national security. What case have you made? Last I checked, Assad has never attacked us. And by the way, didn't you get elected as an anti-war president? Didn't you vote against the last war in Iraq? And here we are five years into your administration and American men and women are still on the ground fighting boogeymen in caves in Afghanistan who will return to their tribal enclaves as soon as we leave. And your Iraq withdrawal thing, that one hasn't worked out so well either. And Senator McCain, 
We all respect you for your service and the sacrifices you've made for this country. But in the end, maybe you're right. Maybe it's all just a game. Mr. President, can you understand why Americans are so dead set against this? We look at wars in the Middle East through the prism of Iraq and the lies and false narrative of Benghazi. You want us to trust you, but you're not credible, clear, or concise. Why should Americans take it on faith that what you're saying is even true? There's no end game, and we can't afford, nor do we want, a World War III. And speaking of that, Mr. President, didn't you win the Nobel Peace Prize? Yeah, you are the one. Give it back. Coming up tonight, we'll get inside information on how Congress is going to vote on the president's proposal from two men who used to cast those votes themselves.